this person commented to me asking me about repentance. This person was saying that he was hearing that you have to repent every day or you just have to repent every so often or so this person was having questions about repentance so allow me to clear it up a bit more so let's go to Ecclesiastes chapter 12 verses 13 through 14 let us hear the whole no let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter fear God and keep his commandments for this is the whole duty of man so what does that mean so some people may believe in this once saved always saved doctrine where you can sin as much as you want and you are saved meaning when you die in sin you still get to go to heaven as you can see here our duty as a human is to serve God so what is the meaning of life to serve God to obey God to praise God if you are not doing that you are not doing what God wants you to do <laughs> 14 for God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. So what is that saying? Our behavior on this earth is going to be judged. So this earth is a testing grounds. So now it is okay to work hard and buy cars and homes and stuff like that but that should not be your main focus your main focus should be doing things for god obeying god bringing more people to jesus christ to serve him if your main focus is to build your life on this temporary world you are doing wrong no wonder bad things are happening to you because you are not doing what you are supposed to do makes sense right okay so let's go to first John 1 and 9 if we confess our sins he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So what is that saying? When you confess your sins, what are you doing? You are repenting. Some people may believe that you have to confess your sins to a man and that man can forgive you of your sins that is wrong only God can forgive you of your sins so what is the point of coming to another human being <laughs> and confessing your sins that is crazy you may say well how can I confess my sins when I don't see God in front of me. Well, that is the whole beauty of it. As I am now, I can confess my sins right now, and I know by faith that God is going to hear me. Because it says here, if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. It does not mean that we are going to see him with our eyes when we confess our sins. Makes sense, right? So, as I am right now in my room, 
I don't see God right now, but I can repent of my sins right now. For instance, God, please forgive me of all my sins. I don't see God right now, but I know that he heard me. Why? Because 1 John 1 and 9 says so. So don't go around going to some type of church where they say that you need to confess your sins to a human. You don't. Stay away from that junk. Let's go to Luke 13 and 3. I tell you, nay, but except you ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. So what is that saying? Like I said, some people believe that you don't have to repent. I have no clue why they believe that. As you can see here, this is saying that you have to repent. You have to confess your sins. Like myself, back in the past, I used to sin so much, so it would have been impossible to name every single sin <laughs> because I was doing so many bad things. So all you have to really say is, God, please forgive me of every bad thing or the way that I have behaved. Everything that I have said, thought, and done that was against you, forgive me, please. And God is going to forgive you if you are earnest, if you are being sincere. Okay. So if you don't repent, you are going to perish, meaning when you die, you are going to hell. You are not going to heaven. Well, you know, my preacher said that, you know, because of grace, I can continue to sin and I won't lose my salvation. What is the whole point of the Bible? What is the whole point of Jesus going around teaching people to change their lives if we can remain as we are? <laughs> what is the point of rules if we can stay the way that we are? Makes no sense. So you have to follow God's commandments and repent of your sins if you fall short. Okay, let's go to Acts 3 and 19, which is my favorite one. Repent ye therefore and be converted. So repent of your sins and change your life. Stop doing those prior sins or those sins that you are doing that your sins may be blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. So, repent of your sins and turn away from your sins. Stop doing it. Well, Kevin, it is so hard. If you have looked at my other video, you will see the type of sins that I was doing. Yes, it was hard, but I did it. I was deep in sin really deep it is a choice it is going to take effort you can't just sit down and say well God is just going to snap his fingers and hey no more sins for me no you have to work at it okay let's go to 2nd Peter 3 and 9 Give me a second, please. Okay. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long suffering, which is patient, to us, word, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. So, this is saying God is waiting for you to change. God is waiting for you to repent of your sins because he don't want you to go to hell. 
Some people may believe that God is this tyrant God, that he is this mean and evil God. This is saying, hey, he does not want you to go to hell, but he wants you to repent and change your ways so he can take you to heaven. <laughs> it says it right there. He wants you to not go to hell. So all of this anger and frustration that you have toward God, you need to quit it. You need to turn your whole life to God now. So you choose the destination of where your soul or your spirit is going. So if you choose to disobey God and continue to do it until death, hey, you are pretty much saying, hey, God, I want to go to hell. <laughs> so, hey, that's your choice. Let's go to Acts 2 and 38. Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins. So, this is saying only Jesus Christ can remove your sins, not some type of figure in the church, this human being. You don't have to confess your sins to a human being. You don't. That human being cannot forgive you of your sins. How can they say that you are forgiven of your sins when you are confessing your sins to a person who have no power without God. Oh, my Lord. So stop doing that. It makes no sense. Well, Father, you know, I have done this wrong, and I cheated on my wife, and I beat my kids, blah, blah, blah. And then after you confess your sins, he tells you to do certain things, and you are forgiven of your sins. What? No. Okay. Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Some people may say that it takes a long time until you receive the Holy Spirit. How can you live saved? How can you obey God without the help of the Holy Spirit? When you are earnest about repenting of your sins, when you repent, that instant, that instant, you receive the Holy Spirit. Some people may say that it takes years until you receive the Holy Spirit. What does it say here? And ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost when? When you repent and be baptized. So once you repent, you receive it. I don't know where this labor comes from. Like, hey, I have to be in God for two years, then I get the Holy Spirit. No. When you repent, you get it. It does not say repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remissions of sins, and ye shall, after two years, receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. It does not say that. <laughs> or after you work so hard, you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. No. It says once you repent and be baptized. So once you repent, because the only way that you can obey God in the right way is if the Holy Spirit is helping you, because we can't do it on our own. We can't. We can't live for God on our own unless the Holy Spirit is helping us. Makes sense, right? So when you say living for God is hard, yes. Imagine how much more hard it would be if the Holy Spirit was not helping you. <laughs>
Okay, let's go to Matthew chapter 3, verse 2. What time is it? Okay, I have a little bit more time. Let's do it. And saying, repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. So, repent, repent, repent. Every time when you do something wrong, you have to repent to God. Hey, God, I am sorry for cursing. I am sorry for telling lies. I am sorry for stealing. I am sorry for doing all of these bad things. And each time you do something bad, repent. Confess your sins to God. That's it. Be sincere about it. Don't say like, hey, you know, what I am going to do, I am going to repent, but in the back of my mind, in the back of my mind, I am going to watch some porn and masturbate, and then after I do that, I'm going to repent, then I'm going over my girlfriend's house, then I am going to have sex with her, then I am going, no. Don't do that. Don't plan on doing wrong when you repent. When, when you repent, you want to stop. Makes sense, right? When you repent, you are not planning on doing something wrong afterward. You may do something wrong afterward, but you are not planning on doing it. You want to stop it. This is the reason why you are repenting, because you want to stop. So when you are planning to do something wrong, your repentance is not sincere. I really hope that makes sense. So in the back of your mind, if you are saying, hey, I am about to smoke this weed and then afterward I am going to repent, then I am going to punch this person right in their face because they was talking about me, then I will repent. No, that is not sincere repentance. God is not going to honor your repentance if you are planning on doing something wrong afterward. Makes sense, right? But if you are like, look, hey God, you know, I watched, I watched some porn and I did some wrong things, and I want to stop. So God, please forgive me. You see, you are not planning on doing it again. It may happen again, but you are not planning on doing it. I really hope that makes sense, or I pray that it makes sense. Let's go to Luke 13 and five. My God, let me stretch, uh, okay. Ugh, there we go. I tell you nay, but except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. Did I do this already? 13 and 5. This is 13 and 3. Hmm. This is saying the same thing. So... <laughs> <laughs> in Luke 13 and 3, I tell you nay, but except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. Then you go to Luke 13 and 5, I tell you nay. So the same thing. <laughs> Amazing. So as you can see here, repent every time when you do something wrong. Stop planning on doing something wrong than repenting because your repentance is not sincere. If I was married and let's say that I beat my wife every day and I come to my wife and say, hey, I am never going to beat you ever again and I am sorry. But inside of my mind, like, hey, if she does not do what I want her to do, I am going to beat her again. So, is my apology sincere? No, because I am planning on beating her again when she does not act in the way that I want her to act. Makes sense, right? I am not married and I don't beat women. So, don't say that Kevin beat women and stuff like that because I don't. <laughs> I am single and I have no kids. 
nothing. <laughs> so really keep this in mind. God bless.